rancher run kubernetes everywhere this is truly an amazing product really enjoy running kubernetes with rancher it facilitates everything it creates nice dashboards it provides a way to install applications create persistent volumes there are just so many things that make rancher a very nice product and in this video i will walk you through installing rancher on a vm and from there setting up your first kubernetes cluster and we will use uh, google cloud and as you can see here i have no vms created now we will create a vm instance in our google cloud platform click create we can name this rancher and we could leave everything just uh, about the same all the defaults let's allow full access right now we need to allow http traffic and https traffic and click create and that should get us going and then once this comes up we will install rancher now that we have our vm up and running we can go back to their website and it's very simple to get this running if you come up here and click on the get started button it tells you get started with rancher in two easy steps now step number one you have to prepare your linux host and it says at least four gig of memory we did that and we installed or will install docker and you already know how to do this so we're not going to go to the, through the process of installing docker but here is the important part this is the command that we have to run in order to get it to to come up so if i go to my vm instance i can copy and paste that command and it's downloading anything that it needs to build rancher and the process is rather fast as you can see it just runs within a docker container and it will listen in on port 8080 and 443 and that is it very fast and if we come back to their website it says to access the rancher server ui you open a browser and go to the host name or the ip address so within google cloud it's very simple you can just uh, click on the little arrow and it will take you there now it takes a little bit to come up you could reload And after a few seconds, you hit reload and you will be presented with this and you can just go right in. It's using a self-signed certificate and that's why. And here we are. Welcome to Rancher. So let's put in a password. Let's just put password. And oops, my passwords don't match. And that is it and for now we have to use the IP address it would it's better when you use your DNS name and etc so that you can have a true certificate but that's okay we're just going to use that for now and here we are presented with the dashboard very very simple now we're going to add a cluster and it gives you the options since we're using Google Cloud, 
let's go for the Google GKE. Now this, this does not mean that you can't use any of the other ones. For example, you could just create a Kubernetes cluster with existing nodes. You create several nodes and you just use this. Or maybe you have a Kubernetes node already or cluster. You could just import that. But for now, let's just go here, click on GKE. And let's just follow the steps. Cluster name, let's just call it Rancher. And we will not get into the details of member roles or labels. But here's the important part. You need to create a service account in Google Cloud. We're not going to cover creating a service account, but when you do, it mentions here that there are four roles that you need to give it compute viewer, project viewer, Kubernetes engine admin, service account user. Those are the ones you need. Now I've already created my service account and you click read from a file and here's my file. And there we go. It gives me access. And the same configuration that you would do in Google Cloud, GKE, you would do here. You want it zonal, regional, what zone, what IP address do you want? Um, just different things here. And we could leave everything as is. Then we come to the node options, how many nodes that means, how many VM instances do I want? What image type? What's the root disk? I will change this to 10. Try to make it as inexpensive as possible for this uh, demo. And you could change the machine type. F1 micro, G1 small. And let's pick that one. And we have persistent disk. You could add a local SSD. It's all the same. If you want to experiment, you can also just do the preemptible nodes, but we'll leave it at that. Node pool auto scaling. Once again, we started with three. We could enable this so that it increases if needed. Horizontal scaling. And that is uh, it. We have more options here, but We have the default account. Now at times there are certain things that need, you need access. Like if you wanted to write to a bucket, this default access will not allow it, but that's for another video. Let's click create. And now it's creating. Now this may take some time, but we can also check our Google Cloud Platform and we can come over to the Kubernetes engine and okay so we still have to wait this will give us an update and as you can see it's already giving it a name and we can refresh this. And you see that it's creating our cluster. Cluster size 3, total vCPUs, and memory, 3 times 1.7. And it will continue with this process until it creates the VM instances for you. And we could see that it finally changed to active and it is complete. If we go back to our Google Cloud console, we'll see that it is complete. And if we click on these details, we could see that it's exactly what we configured 
And if we go to Compute Engine, we will see the three that make up this Kubernetes cluster. And we see our Rancher Management. So if we come back here, it's the same one that we created. Okay, so here's where we go into our dashboard. And if we click on the name, we get a very nice dashboard giving us how our cluster is performing, how much CPU, memory, and how many pods. Very nice, isn't it? And from within this dashboard, there are many cool options. You could launch a shell here and start running your cube CTL commands. Cube um, CTL get services. Cube CTL get pods. All namespaces. And you see all of them. Cube CTL get nodes. So everything that you could do in uh, from the Google console, you could pretty much do here for uh, Kubernetes commands. And if you, for example, now if we want to run an application, we can come here to the apps and there are catalogs that you can configure for this, but let's just go with whatever's in there now and we can go and see what's available in these catalogs. And we'll see that we have, we have WordPress all the way at the end. We can install that. And we can go through the basic configuration. We'll leave everything pretty much at the default uh, WordPress, namespace WordPress. Uh, you will use the default image, WordPress user, username is user. We'll just put password for the password. Uh, do we want a persistent volume? We could do that. Sure, let's do it. 10 gig and it will create it for us. Uh, it's going to install MariaDB if we want to. We don't have to. Once again, WordPress user, we'll put password. Root, root password is password. Do we want to make it persistent? Sure, why not? And do we want to expose the layer seven load balancer? Yes. And we launch. And it is working on deploying this. This will let us know once the application is active. And we can click on this application and take a look. And immediately it lets us know the endpoints. Let's see. And we are able to come in here and take a look at our WordPress site and let's say we want to go here press password and we are ready to go and because we created a persistent volume claim we are able to modify this and our changes are persistent and we can take a look at our workloads and you can see we have two workloads, our WordPress and our database. And if we click here, we'll see that we're able to scale this. So if I want two more pods, it will do that for me. Very simple, isn't it? And if we go to our Google Cloud Platform Council will see that our volumes are here, database and our WordPress.
So everything's persistent. Very nice, isn't it? And once we come back into our dashboard for this Kubernetes cluster called Rancher, we see that the CPU has gone up a little bit, memory usage has gone up, and the number of pods has gone up. And this is very nice because it helps us to see if we need to do some horizontal scaling or if we just need to have a larger size node or nodes or if we need more CPU and then that way we could build out a production environment that is accurate and will scale according to our demands it's just a very nice system very very simple to use it's not complicated at all I hope you have enjoyed this demo if you have any questions you can put in the comments down below and I will respond immediately and just want to mention that we are not affiliated with Rancher it's just an awesome application that we like to use it's open source it's just an amazing product and we highly recommend it and we we truly love anything where you could be an architect and run on any cloud every cloud aws azure gcp like our information says we love the cloud and we love anything that makes running docker kubernetes easier